the whole approach of emotional logic is to map emotional states, but then to go through those and just to reflectively spend a bit of time, best in a conversation with somebody who understands the method, um, but a reflective conversation with somebody to name what's really important that's being challenged in that time. So you might be aware of huge problems and that might seem awful, but what are you worried about losing in that? And as soon as you ask that question, there are two core questions. This is a terrible situation, but what have I lost? Or what am I worried I might lose? It's very simple, but really the answer to that goes on and on and on. And we've got a method of helping people just start with a small list of what they're worried about losing because the world is heading into such a difficult state. Uh, and I'm not going to deny that at all. It is. We are facing very difficult times. And therefore, if you can really name what your values are, what is important to you that is going to be challenged by this, you end up not looking at the problems. You look at what can I do to preserve these values in the midst of this deteriorating world? Because at whatever point comes where you can build anything stable, you'll want to build it around those values. So, you, you know, it's really you're, you're seeding resilience, you're seeding renewal by, by going through this reflective process early on. And by breaking the big situation into small little bits, which are called personal values, you're empowered. You're mm -hmm. empowered with the power of choice. Which one am I going to look at today? Which one next week? Who am I going to talk to about this particular value? Yeah, there's, now I've got things I can do. I can't, I can't save the world, but maybe I can be a seed of recovery when it's possible. Emotional logic really is a, a paradigm shift. It does challenge our existing and culturally um, modulated understanding of our inner emotional world. And it does emphasize to us that our unpleasant loss emotions, the emotions we experience when we experience something going wrong in our lives or some setback or disappointment are not the problem. They are part of the solution. And for EAN, facing so many challenges and with having all the courage to go out there and try and make a difference and try and take on all these injustices, facing setbacks and challenges and difficult um, times when things don't go as to plan is inevitable. And all that courage gets bound up with a desire to make a difference. And all those desires to make a difference are driven by things that you value deeply, things that you hold deeply that matter to you being threatened in the society in which you're living. But as, as Julie has been saying, uh, we do need, first of all, to understand our inner emotional world. But once you've got that way of thinking, you can also start making new guesses about what's going on in somebody else, particularly somebody you're in conflict with. Because once you've got the idea that things are based in values, so you're not looking at their behavior, you're not necessarily looking at you know, the, the emotions that they're expressing, you're going through that to think, well, what's your pattern of values? You've actually got a new way of connecting with people by talking about the values. And, and that actually is a way of building a relationship with someone at a human level who you might completely disagree with, but nevertheless, there's a sense of a mutuality before you start discussing your areas of conflict and disagreement. And that is a firmer basis for having an impact, for planting a seed of transformation later on that somebody might take seriously. Yeah, you've shifted it immediately to the level at which humanity actually starts to thrive. We've been able to flexibly develop a, a, another program which is much more based on initial discussion groups, a discovery meeting, first of all, uh, just a Zoom in which you hear about the overall structure, then maybe going into a book club to, to learn at a, a level where you talk completely informally with people. Uh, and then if you feel this is beginning to catch your interest, and you think there's more that uh, you could uh, you know, pick up from that, then joining on a course later on. But we know that when people start to talk with each other with these concepts, it opens up all sorts of new ideas. So there is a level of inner transformation right from the earliest stages of, of learning. It's a progressive thing. We call it lifelong learning, because here I am 20 years down the line, I'm still learning more about the whole thing. We, we need to be together talking with people who are seeing it from different angles. So this is the start of a, a long process, well, a lifelong process, but it's a, an exciting exploration. I don't want to make it sound arduous. It liberates people 
and gives them hope. Uh, so I would say it's well worth dipping a toe in the water and then putting your foot in and then giving it a stir with your hand and seeing how it goes.